year. A Big Ten team that I've fallen in love with breaks my heart. Tonight it was Boudarius Mozart Bowie. I've said for weeks he plays music. He doesn't play basketball. He did his best down the stretch to bring Northwestern back into it with a heavy dose of Chase Adij, his sidekick tonight. But UCLA was just so damn solid, guys. And I have just looked at their numbers this year. I've looked at the results. I've said I don't trust this team. Now that I'm seeing it under the bright lights, it's time for me to trust this team, Laval. Can UCLA win a national championship? Without, you know, Jalen Clark, it's it's tough. But look, they all still play for Mick Cronin. They're all still held to the same standard uh, and held to the same level of accountability. I, I thought, you know, just they you know, they did what they do. They, they can win in the 50s. They can they can grind you out. And it's, you know, it's going to be a tough Tough out. I thought Northwestern um they had a good game plan, you know, and and Jaime Jaquez is just he's just really, really awesome. seems like he's been in college forever. Yeah. But he's just a winner. I mean, he's just a flat out winner. You know, anytime they get in a pickle, you have that guy to go to. So that that gives you a lot of confidence about advancing in these next couple of rounds because they have somebody they can go to. Adem Bona affected the game. It was good to see him back out there. Uh, defensively and Northwestern, you know, look, the guard, the two guards, you know, were, were, were really good. I thought they, um, they went at that. They, they thought Jaime was Waldo. They went at him and then they stopped. And I was trying to figure out why, <laughs> because when they caught him on an Island, you know, on the switch, they, they, they got good creation and, and had some good shot opportunities out of it. And then they, they went one five ball screen again and, and Northwestern or UCLA was hard hedging or trapping. Um, but you know, heck of a season for those guys. So can UCLA do it? I, I hate, I would hate to say no, because they can grind you out and then they got hot cares. But don't you need, how, how many guys do you, don't you need like, and now Singleton's hurt. So, yeah, so now if, he's not not bad, if he's out for an extended period, that they're that's, changes, that's they're a done. game changer. They're done. But they're and, and they're done Hawkeyes. though. We're saying, we're saying done. Like well, if they lose they're done. done as far as having a chance to go to a Final Four. I don't think they can beat Gonzaga uh, without without Singleton. I think you're down to, like, what are we going to do? Eventually, we're going to have just Hawkes and friggin' Tiger and nothing else. <laughs> they still point. got Amari Bailey, who was fantastic He's awesome. Tonight. He actually, yes, you're right. Good Amari point. Bailey has impressed me so much over yeah. really the whole year for the most part, and he was hurt. But, like, who was the kid last year? Who was the freshman last year that left after a year and he did nothing? For uh, Peyton Watson. Yeah, he was terrible. Terrible yeah. and left. Yeah. And didn't really buy in completely. Like, Amari Bailey has completely bought in. He was defending tonight. He He's become, like, a decent third option offensively. I just think, again, they were thin to begin with, and they lose Jalen Clark, and now their best shooter probably in David Singleton. So your best defender's done. Your best shooter, I don't know how long he's going to be out for, but it didn't look good as he basically was carried out, helped off the court. So I don't think UCLA, uh, but I love how they, how hard they play, man, do they play hard as shit. So here's why I'm not writing them off, Jeff. I think that in both of their next two games, obviously we got to see how the draw breaks out, but we would expect Gonzaga in the sweet 16, barring an upset and Kansas just went out tonight. So if you're looking at Arkansas, probably UConn, right? I think no matter who those teams are, they play in the next two games. UCLA's top three is better than their opponent's top three. And I understand four it's and five. It's going to be almost every night. Their top three is going to be better than almost everybody, Greg. I don't care about that. I care about four, five, six. Four, five, six. Like, do they even have a four? Like, Bona, and he can't even stay out of foul trouble. Imagine him against Sonogo and Klingon. He'll be out of the game in eight minutes. Yeah, I think UConn would be the most dangerous matchup, but like Gonzaga is not a tough defensive team, right? Like I think guard, those three guys would be enough. Can he guard Timmy? Like how quickly will Timmy foul him out with all those up and unders <laughs> and all that un, un, unorthodox bullshit? Like no way. Like they're going to have trouble. I, I just don't see it with UCLA. I'd be shocked. I think UCLA would be a favorite in that game, even given the injury situation. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. If they draw UConn, I agree with you. That's a scary matchup to me right now, but they might not draw UConn. UConn still has to win a few games. And with Arkansas in upset mode, right? Like if we end up, if they have Gonzaga and Arkansas back to back, I'm taking UCLA in both those games. And I have not been a UCLA believer this season, but shit, man, Tiger Campbell, Jaime Hawkins, how many times have they been in these spots?
Listen, like, I picked them to win it all in the preseason. I love them when they're healthy. But last I checked, they're as banged up as anybody in the field that's left right now. Yeah, that's very fair. 